right, I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Our first order of business tonight will be to approve the minutes of December 4th. And motion we approve the minutes of December 4th. Second. All right, we have motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, three nothing. All right, our first order of business is a presentation on National Grid Energy Improvement Project. I see we've got Joe on the line there. Joe, do you want... Mm -hmm. Do you need oh, a sorry, minute? That? I'm sorry, do you need a minute? I saw Danny just got on. Do you, do you want us to go to something else and then come back? Oh, no, we're good. Okay, we're good. okay. I can, um, I can sort of take off while Danny pulls up the slide if that works for everyone else. Sure. I don't want to hold up your, your agenda. So good evening. Um, thank you for the opportunity to join you tonight. My name is Joe Carroll. I apologize. I couldn't be there in person. We um, had some storm efforts going on, so I was pulled from my storm assignment, so I actually just got off of that. Joe, but, sorry to yeah. interrupt. Could someone give me screen sharing permissions? Uh, can I, um, we got Zoom bump. Can I do this? Can I share this yeah. my screen? Okay. Um, as long as Joe's okay with that. Yeah, that works. All right, but yeah, so I'll, um, I'll get started while we're pulling this up. From beginning again, the, there. Um, the, the goal for tonight is really to provide a informative overview of a future proposed project on our E5 F6 transmission line that runs through your community. We're still a few years out from construction efforts, but we wanted to be very proactive in meeting with the communities and providing this sort of high level general project overview. Um, one item that I do want to note um, is the title on this slide is Central to Western Mass Energy Improvement Project. We decided to rebrand the project name when it comes to our public outreach efforts. Um, that includes, you know, permitting efforts really to try and relate it more to the, the communities and the area that the line is and that will be working. And part of it is in hopes that when it comes to our external outreach, we might capture the attention of the public a little bit more than if it was just E5 F6 transmission projects. So that's a little bit about um, why we decided to rebrand it when it comes to our um, public outreach efforts. So if we can move on to the next slide. Thank you. And um, real quick, this is just a little bit of the agenda of what we'll be covering tonight. Uh, we'll touch on the project overview and the scope of work. Um, we'll kind of showcase a little bit of the structure comparison about what you might see currently in the field versus the proposed project uh, structures. We'll go over a general permitting overview, the project schedule, and then end with some resources available to the public to learn more about the project and ask any questions that they may have. And if at any point you have any questions tonight, feel free to stop me. We'll definitely have time at the end to answer any questions that you may have. Um, and if we don't have the answer tonight, we'll um, certainly follow back up with you as soon as possible. So if we can move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. And um, so this is a little bit of the general project overview. So the E5 F6 transmission line um, was originally constructed in the early 1900s. The transmission structures and the tap structures um, in total is approximate approximately 690 structures. It travels through 16 communities and is roughly 67 to 69 miles long. So it's a fairly long uh, project right away. The line currently operates at 69 kV. And for those who aren't familiar, the kV just represents the voltage. And upon completion of construction, that will remain the operating voltage. However, these structures will be built to operate up to 115 kV standards. And the goal of the project is a complete rebuild of the line. So just to reiterate, the current voltage is 69 kV, and when construction is complete, that will remain the operating voltage. However, the structures will be built to the standards to operate at 115 kV in the future if that is ever necessary. So what's your time uh, frame for moving on to 115 kV? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? What's the time frame for upgrading to 115 kV? 
So that's not an answer I have at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a pre-planned answer, um, but the current plan is to remain operating at 69 kV when construction is complete. But I don't have an answer for when in the future it may operate at 115 kV. I don't know that tonight. Uh, but I can certainly kind of dig around a little bit, and then if I have any sort of idea or ballpark, I'll get back to you, but I'm not sure that we have that at this point in time. Um, and a little specific to Sunderland, we'll be replacing 29 existing structures with new structures and wires, so that's sort of the, um, the number of structures in your town. We'll also be installing what is referred to as OPGW, which is opt optical ground wire, which in short is really, um, it helps improve the communication between the structures and stations while also acting as a second line of defense from weather events such as lightning strikes. And where necessary, we'll perform you know, any needed vegetation management work within the right of way, as well as any access improvements where necessary. And again, all this work will take place within the right of way and within our easements. So um, the associated vegetation work, are you talking spraying? Are you talking cutting? So it could kind of encompass all that. It could be as simple as just mowing around where they'll be working. And then if there is any needed work, um, you know, we try to do as early and as often as we can when it comes to our notifications around work in the area. Any additional questions on, at this point? All right, we can move on to the next slide, please. There it is. Um, this is really just there for anyone that wants to come back and and look at the presentation. It's kind of a, a high level area overview of where the line is within the community. Um, so this sort of, the orange line represents where the, the right of way and where the structures are within the town of Sunderland. I do want to point out, we recognize that there is also an ever source right of way that runs through the community. So um, just so we're clear, the national grid right of way runs parallel to T Waddle Road and intersects with roads um, like Amherst Road and Still Corner Road, whereas the Eversource right of way um, is near Shootsbury Road and goes up towards East Leverett and crosses Sand Hill Road. Which are all Leverett town roads, right? Those yeah. aren't Sunderland roads? Yeah, no, they mostly go through Leverett. Quiet. I'm not sure if that was a question. I couldn't really hear that. <laughs> no, just the roads she listed off were all Leverett roads. They weren't Sunderland roads telling us where they're supposed oh, okay. to through Sunderland. Okay. Um, and we can um, circle back and get the specific roads and send them to you if that would be helpful. Uh, but yeah, so if we could move on to the next slide, please. Um, so this, again, similar to the last one, is more of a, a visual. So on the left-hand side is an example of a, a lattice structure that you may see in the right-of-way now within the town. And on the right-hand side is more of a visual uh, representation of the proposed structures that would be in the right-of-way in the future after construction. So this is just to sort of compare and contrast what's there now versus the proposed structures on the right hand side. And the next slide actually we can get into a little more um, information in terms of comparisons. Um, so this, you know, kind of, we can talk a little bit more about the structures. And this represents a typical cross section within a 125 foot right of way. So generally speaking, the offset from existing structures to the proposed structures will be about two to five feet. So about two to five feet difference in where the structures are located now versus the proposed structures. And the proposed structures will be roughly five to 25 feet taller than the existing structures. Um, part of that is due to the wire that will be, the new wire that will be placed as well as due to the 115 kV standards. That is part of the reason for the increase in structure height. 
So any questions on, on this part? And if there are any, um, you know, visually speaking, if there are any abutters who uh, may have more of, a, of an impact when it comes to the structure height, that's another thing that we'll try to be proactive in identifying and communicating in advance of uh, the construction efforts. How are you putting those structures in? So we actually have a slide that will okay. kind of show some of the equipment that will be used All right. um, later on. Yep. What's, what's the maximum height? The maximum height, I don't know that number off the top of my head, but I can circle back. I'm not sure if anyone else from the, the project team is on. We might be able to answer that at the end. I can kind of take someone okay. that might have the, the answer for the maximum height. But yeah, so if we can move on to the next slide, please. So this is a general overview of the permitting process. Some of the permits are still in review that we may need, um, but this kind of covers a, a good uh, list of them. And there'll be federal, state, and local permitting reviews locally. Example, through the Conservation Commission, anything that we need to apply through there, we will. Uh, we also have a number of environmental permitting efforts. One that I wanna highlight at the top is the ENF, which is the Environmental Notification um, form that we anticipate filing in February of 2024. And then at the top is the Energy Facility Siting Board. And this is the state siting process. Um, the anticipated filing date for that is also in 2024 and roughly anticipate that going to 2027. And I just want to highlight the third bullet there for folks who may not be familiar with that process is that it provides the opportunity for municipal and a butter participation. So it's another avenue to be involved throughout this process. So I just wanted to highlight that. So when the time comes for that um, filing, that there is another opportunity for the municipalities and a butters to ask questions and to learn more about the project and be involved throughout the uh, permitting process. So that's kind of a general overview. Again, there's still reviews going on to identify any additional permits that may be necessary for this project. So we could move on to the next slide, please. And this is just a, a high level overview of the current project schedule. Some of these dates are subject to change. Um, and some examples that we want to pull out, our stakeholder outreach has already begun and that will remain ongoing throughout the life of the project, including notifications, abutter interactions, a project website, and any local meetings that are necessary. Our field assessments also kicked off in the summer of this year and will remain ongoing, including any construction reviews, land survey, environmental field work, and soil boring efforts. Vegetation management uh, kicked off in the summer as well ahead of our soil boring efforts. And we anticipate that to continue through and into the fall of 2024. And then there'll be another round of um, necessary vegetation management work prior to construction in 2027. As we just reviewed, the permitting efforts are extensive, including federal, state, and local reviews. And that timeline is anticipated to be 2024 to 2027. And then lastly, um, our construction and restoration efforts. So we anticipate construction beginning in 2027 and going into and through 2033. So that's sort of a, a timeline of the uh, duration of construction and restoration. And again, we'll, do, we'll be proactive in communicating ahead of any of that activity in the town and in the areas to any of others. Are there any questions on the schedule? Not, we just have two more slides and then we'll be wrapping up. Um, so this is a, another good visual to kind of come back to. So if any residents want to come back and familiarize themselves with any of the pre-construction activities or familiarize themselves with some of the equipment that may be necessary to complete this work. So on the left-hand side are some examples of pre-construction activities and on the right hand side are some of the typical transmission line construction equipment that we will utilize. One 
picture that's not included is the potential use of a helicopter. And if we do use a helicopter, the proper notifications and communication channels will be followed. And we'll also be sure to communicate with the police and fire departments so that if any resident you know, calls in a, a helicopter hovering over the transmission line, that they're familiar with um, the work going on so that they can address any questions or potential concerns um, as necessary. We have one more slide to go and then we'll be all, all set for tonight. Um, so again, this is these are some resources that are available to the public to learn more about the project, reach a member of the outreach team to ask any questions, or if any of butters email in a project website. And these are all active today, these are all live. Um, and we'll continue to monitor the email, continue to monitor and update the project website um, and provide updates as we move forward. And one item that is not included on this slide is that we also plan to host um, a few project open houses in the coming months to provide another opportunity for abutters or residents to come in, learn more about the project, interact with different members of the project team um, to kind of learn more, familiarize themselves with the project and ask any questions that they may have. Uh, with the number of communities we're working to identify, you know, a few different locations that we may be able to invite more than one municipality to attend and we'll be sure to communicate those locations with the town so that they can share it on the town website, town social media, um, and any channels and avenues to kind of get the word out to hopefully increase engagement when it comes to this project. So with that being said, that really concludes um, my presentation. So I know we have a few folks from the project team who are also on. So. If there are any additional questions that you have, we're more than happy to take those now. But if you think of anything after the fact, you're more than welcome to reach out at any time and we'll circle back with you. I think we're good for now. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. And again, if you think of anything else, feel free to reach out uh, to myself, Danny, or the project website, and we'll get back to you as uh, soon as possible. Wonderful, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, have a good night. You as well. All righty, our next order of business is the Kestrel Land Trust Conservation Restriction. Yes, yes. You. so we have Kristen DeBoer, the executive director of the Kestrel, I think executive director is the right title, of the Kestrel Land Trust, um, and Nancy Pick, property owner. Um, Kristen, I don't know if you want to introduce the, the topic and the property and what you all hope sure. to do. Yes, thanks for having me tonight. Um, so again, I'm Kristen DeBoer, I'm the executive director of Kestrel Land Trust, and we are happy to be working collaboratively with um, Town of Sunderland to protect land on Mount Toby. Uh, a few years back, you might remember that we collaborated with um, the Conservation Commission and the Water District to conserve about 40 acres for watershed protection. And we've also been able to work with other willing sellers on Mount Toby who want to conserve their forest. And in this case, uh, we have a donation of a conservation restriction over some back land. Um, so the the essence would be the forest remains a forest, uh, and and by putting a conservation restriction on it, um, the landowner is choosing to keep it in that state uh, forever. So it's it lasts in perpetuity. Um, Sutherland has many <coughs> conservation restrictions and agricultural preservation restrictions in town, so I think you're probably familiar with the tool. Um, but as part of the process of approval for CRs, uh, the the state approves the CR, the land trust approves the CR, the landowner approves the CR, and the town um, is also asked to sign off on the CR. And so that really is the question for tonight. I'm happy to show you a map of where it is if you'd like uh, and answer any questions that you might have. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd love to see a, a map of where it is. Okay, uh, I think I need to share screen. Do you have uh, a parcel number or? I can look um, at you would, would you prefer to share? Yeah, um, if you don't mind. Let's see. I mean, <laughs> the easy description of it is that it's on the north part of Mount Toby. Um, it's next to a wildlife management area. 
and it's just east of the um, Robert Frost Trail. So if I can share the screen, I can share the map, but I'm not sure I have a deep uh, assessor lot number off the top of my head at the moment. It's okay. We, we don't, if it's going to be too much of a pain. You know. we'll get, we can at least get the general area from this map, right? Yep. Yeah. I think it's lot 28. Um, yeah, so I provided the conservation restriction in advance, and so if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But otherwise, this could be a very simple. You could press the cell. That keeps you on the. <laughs> I think this is how you do. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Party. Does the board have any questions on any of those? No. Are there more still to come other than the list you have there? Are we waiting on any? Um, any there may be one more. Okay. We're just waiting for them to um, get everything in. But these people have paid all their taxes, yeah. filled all the forms, paid okay. the fees. So. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, I'd entertain a motion to approve the list of common vehicle with alcohol licenses and the one common vehicle without alcohol license um, as presented by Jeff. Motion to approve the licenses as prevent presented by Jeff. One second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three nothing. All right. Next up, we have a point Franklin County Solid Waste Management District board representative. So we've been uh, without a um, Franklin, called Franklin County Solid Waste Management District board member. Maybe from, since Dan from from many years. <laughs> <laughs> At last. It's so. a job I had some years ago. Um, so, I, did, I, we, I was asked if, if we wanted to appoint somebody, um, Dan said he might be interested. It's only quarterly meetings, I checked. Yeah. Um, if you're interested, I would fully support <laughs> not taking I nominate right Dan now. Murphy. <laughs> I second it before he takes it back. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank, Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, next up, we have old business, uh, first of which is 23 plum tree discussion. So I'll start by correcting the big mistake I made last week, which was saying that it was going to cost lots and lots of <laughs> taxpayer dollars. It's going to cost less than than um, what I thought. I think I said it was going to be like a three dollar increase to the tax rate and a thousand dollars on the average tax bill. That, that was if we were borrowing like 1.8 million a year. So we're not doing that. <laughs> um, so the, if we were doing it over 30 years, uh, it would increase the tax rate by 24 cents per thousand, um, which would uh, raise the average tax bill about $80 a year. Um, for 20 years, tax rate would go up to 28 cents. Uh, go up 28 cents and the tax bill in fact would be about $94 and if we wanted to only do 15 years um, the tax rate would go up 33 cents and it would be an impact of about $110 uh, a year and for people who may be at home listening um, you know, a debt exclusion is different than an override like we did last year and that the override stays on this debt exclusion depending on how many years we do it for when it's done, it goes off and the tax rate goes back down. Um, so it is not a permanent increase. Uh, and by the way, this is based on $1.8 million principal and uh, a 6.8% interest rate, which was the interest rate when I looked it up <laughs> last week. So th this isn't necessarily relevant to discussion, but just curiosity. Um, are towns able to renegotiate, like if, if it's, we get a 6.8% loan right now and then a couple of years from now it goes down can we re you know like <laughs> refinance, refinance. refinance <laughs> your mortgage like because just because you know six point whatever is isn't the worst i've heard of but it certainly is not great and there's a solid chance we're going to see that go down in the next couple of years hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> but, yes hopefully um, <laughs> i i could look into it i don't know the answer and i don't know I think the answer probably depends on how we do it mm -hmm. in that if we do it in the middle of the year, we can't collect the taxes right. for stuff that we don't need it for. So let me, let me find out. Good question. 
just because you know there's a potential that that number could actually go down if we were able to get a lower interest rate in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and also, it, it, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but this feels like this is a worst case scenario if we don't get any kind of grant money or we don't get any kind of help otherwise from anywhere, any other sources, this would be the town going entirely on its own to, to pay for the building without any kind of help. Right, so I was, gonna, I was gonna go through the expenses and then talk a little bit about grants too. So I think last week you asked for some of the different expenses. Um, so monthly, I think we're looking at a monthly mortgage of about $11,800. Again, this is if we're totally financing it, um, not using any other monies. Electricity is about $2,000 a month estimate. Propane estimated about $1,500 a month. Um, insurance, about $225 a month. Um, and then estimated about $300 uh, a year for the septic, figuring it needed to be pumped every couple of years. Um, that being said, we're looking into the size of the septic because we think it may not be big enough, so we might need to put a new septic system in too to support um, the amount of people that, that might be using the building. So we're gonna find out, uh, I've already reached out to the Board of Health to find out what what size the septic is. So support. I guess my question on that, is it because we anticipate more people in the building because of it being a senior center or because it was? Yeah. Okay. Yep, and events and meetings, yeah, just okay. more people rather than private offices. And what's the sum of the non-mortgage monthly expenses you have there? Uh, about 3,700. Okay. Thirty-five, yes. 35. So that's very close to the what the senior center is saying that they can afford. Right, and so just other, that doesn't include phones. It doesn't include internet. I don't know. Some of these things we might might be a wash if we're no longer in this building and paying for those things for here, and we do it there. Um, but yeah, I'm starting to, to put all this together. Right, but then there's still snow plowing and lawn maintenance. Uh, well, yes. Yep. Snow plowing, I think we do for ourselves. But, okay. But, um, okay. Yep, it would be adding another property to the lawn care. Yep. The lawn care. I mean, again, you know, you, you just... Probably going to need some type of gutter cleaning. You know, I mean, just there's going to be probably some other yeah. maintenance because it's a have a, it. I mean, not horrible, but it is quite treed through there, right? Yep. Yep. It is. Um, yeah. So, so putting together the costs. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. It's not a. And then we. I've also been talking to the senior center director about potential funding sources um, and she's looking at community development block grant funds um, I also need to reach out to the CPA committee to see if CPA funds would be appropriate for this project um, how old is the building you know not very um, but I, I want to say less than 20 years old okay Right around 20, I think, yeah. Okay. Which is good for us in terms of it being, yeah. you know, in fairly good shape. And, and the other thing I want to mention is that people are, are interested and, um, and curious about, about the building. And I think most people understand that everybody I've talked to said it's a beautiful building. <laughs> um, they want to make sure that we're, we're doing our due diligence. You know, one resident raised the issue of the septic. Um, another said, hey, have you looked at all the other properties that could, you know, potentially be locations? And um, so it's, ex people are excited about it, which is good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, CDBG, I think Jennifer said, if we applied by ourselves, we could get close to a million dollars. Uh, if we applied with, as a regional, with the other towns, I think we can get maybe one point seven million, but that would be the 
the top. And I need to look into that too because we benefited from CDBG funds for housing rehabilitation, mm -hmm. but that was a regional project as well. So I don't know if we can apply for, for this too. Because there's that. obviously going to be furnishings and all that that need to go into that building. Right. You know, you can't really walk in there with your milk crate and lawn chair and set up an office, right? <laughs> right. No. Yep. Challenge accepted. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I think, I think a space study is certainly yeah. something that we need to do. And, um, you know, I, I would imagine that's a conversation. Hey, is this room big enough? Do we want a bigger room? Do we, you yeah. know, the, those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, so. Any proportional sense yet? So you know? when, I, when I talked to Jennifer, um, I guess about half is what they think that they would want. Exclusively. Exclusively, yeah. Um, shared space and some balance for us. Right. Yeah. And, and what they're looking for. So I think that some of the challenges are going to be, does, does it make sense in that, you know, the senior center has an idea of there's a, a loop that seniors can walk, which is great. But if half the offices is town buildings and we're having meetings, you know, do we really want people walking around and chatting during the meetings? Like, how do we figure that out so that it works for everybody? Um, right. I mean, it's got kitchen space. Is that shared space or is that someone's dedicated space? Right. Things yeah. like that. You know, because there, there was a kitchen and like almost like a dining room type right. space there that... Obviously, you guys want some place to put your lunches and microwave your meals and things like that. So, yeah. and then like the courtyard and stuff. You know, yeah, I can understand the. Yeah, so I think I think we're exploring exploring the options. Um, I mean, I think I think it's going to be hard. Um, to fund it all ourselves. I think that we, we're gonna have to go after some grants pretty strongly. The, the CDBG grant, I think Jennifer said is due March 4th, and we need to um, we need to be able to prove site control, which we can do with the P and I, um, purchase and sale contingent on town meeting, but um, we also need the rest of the funds we need to prove that we have the rest of the funds for the project, which I think would be hard to do by March 4th. Um, but, sorry, let me step back. In order to do that, we would have to have a special town meeting and a special election um, in order to pass the debt exclusion before March 4th. And we probably be looking to do that in February or something like that, or maybe even late January? Um, we, yeah, I mean, it, so I guess I'm, I'm trying to think through the, the sequencing. Um, do we apply for the grant before we know that we, that the space works for everybody? Um, if we were to apply for the grant, get approved and then RN falls through, is that going to bite us in terms of, I don't think we can apply for the grant. What do you mean if our end falls through? If we approve the money? If, if, we, if we go ahead with applying for the grant and then the town says no, we don't want to go ahead with it at town meeting or whatever. Uh, they will say you don't have the money. You, you have to show you have so, okay, the so, money so have, when okay, you okay, apply gotcha, for okay, the okay, grant. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So. Um, and in terms of help from South County Senior Center as well as the other towns in, the, in that system, um, is there anything either they can do to help that process or are willing to do? Uh, which process? Like the, the purchasing? Um, any of it, really. <laughs> you know, applying for the grants. Um, I think they would certainly be supportive, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't know that they, are, they have much resources to put into that. Um, but I, I think that 
yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that it is on us to decide if we want to buy a building, and if we do, they will help from the, as members of the South County Senior Center, yeah. is my impression. Okay. So, if to apply for this grant, just so we understand timeline here, the grant would be paperwork due March 4th. You've got to pro prove you have the money prior to March 4th. Is it just the day before March 4th you need to prove you have the money? <laughs> I think it's when you submit the application. Okay. So, technically, you could do a special town meeting and vote for debt exclusion or whatever, you know, to purchase it. Is that all you would need? It would be a special town meeting and for it to pass. And in an election, I believe. I'm sorry? An election. The, the voters need to approve it too, I think. Okay. And so that's a 10 day, roughly before that deadline, you need to have that done? To get certified and everything, yeah. Do we have an idea of how much money the town needs in order to be able to approve proof of funds? Is it just the balance, my, my, whatever we're applying for grant-wise, what we think it's going to cost, and just the balance of that? Yeah. So purchase price that we're looking at is 1.8, right? If we were going in as a multi, as a, as a regional thing, you said potentially up to 1.7 maybe? Yep. So if we were to say we have 200000 which gives us $100,000 of renovation funds and what we the, the balance for the purchase price, that might be enough to make the grant happen. Do we have enough left in ARPA to be able to put ARPA funds behind it, even as a placeholder, to then have town meeting happen? To show that we have the money just, or is that, um, is that We're gonna talk to a little bit more about ARPA later. We have about 150,000 left. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we, we could certainly do it that way. Um, yeah. Because what I figure is that, that I have a hard time seeing anyone in town saying no to using the money we have from ARPA plus this giant grant and, and no cost to the town taxpayers in town. I, I, I well, that's hard. best case scenario. <laughs> no, I know. I, I know. I'm just saying that, like, <laughs> in terms of if, if, we, if we go that direction, I don't think we're going to have people who are going to come like, harassing us and yelling at us because of that. That's a, a win for the town. So sure. look into it if you don't mind. See if that's an option. Get a, an idea for what our maximum amount we could ask for the grant is and what their minimum amount they need from us as buy-in. Because if they say, oh yeah, we just need to know that the whole purchase price is covered, great. We can come up with $100,000 in ARPA funds plus the 1.7 to get to 1.8 and then the rest of it we can worry about with town meeting in terms of renovation costs and things like that. Yep. Okay. And then I guess the other thing just to think about is the flip side of that, which is we apply, we say, hey, we have the matching money, and they say, oh, we're not going to give you 1.7. We'll give you a million, though. And then do we have time to come up with another $600,000 by town meeting? So, right? Because they don't have to fully fund So the if they came back and said we were going to do 1.1 one, one instead of 1.7, my assumption would be that would be after the March 4th. Right, but we would still need to Don't appropriate the money between March 4th and April 27th or whatever, which means we'd need to get it on the ballot, which I don't think we could do. Interesting. So do we need, we need to just appropriate the whole thing with the hope that we get the grant? Is it really what we're up against? When right, because they could say, <laughs> here, we'll give you 200000 You don't know what you're going to get off well, the grant. Right. Do we know, I mean, I guess my question is that, do people normally get these grants when they apply, or do they, is it 50-50, 20-20? It's, you know, it's competitive, yeah. yeah. It's, um, I think it, it depends on the, the project and sure. what the other projects it, are. But. However much is going on that year and everything else, right. Because if they're, so that, that's a big difference, right, when you go to a meeting and talk to the town. We could get 200,000, we could get 1.7 million. Yeah. Or someplace in between. Um, is there any or zero? 
Is there anyone who can get a feel for that? Or? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll reach out to them. Yeah. And I guess the other thing that I will also confirm, I've sort of taken it for granted, but I will confirm that if we offered 1.8 million that they wouldn't reject it. Because, right. <laughs> right. you know, they could say, you know, 1.9, we're firm, we will, it can sit there empty for years, we don't care. Yes. Um, and if they say that, and there's always the chance someone could purchase this property tomorrow. Yep. And we could go to them and say, I'll give you two point two million and they say, Yeah, see ya, bye. But just we cannot go above the appraisal price, right? That's yep. yeah, that's fixed tonight. Can we get a second opinion on the appraisal? <laughs> <laughs> Shop around until we find someone who yeah, just, I'm just kidding. Um Okay, so so let's if you don't mind finding out as much as you can about what our options are there. Um is it fair boys coming fast? So, <laughs> so coming there, fast. Yeah. Can can we can we find a magic number which is the amount the town would be comfortable absorbing? Let's say that the town can can handle seven hundred seven hundred thousand, let's say. And can okay, we so sorry. Sorry. Bef uh seven hundred thousand without I'm talking about in terms of increase in tax. Let, let, let's okay, say we okay. find a reasonable amount that we think that the town could handle. Can we for can we go into the town meeting asking for seven hundred thousand contingent on grant funding for the rest of it? So we have that in place. Then we, we, we apply for the grant beforehand with the ARPA money attached to it to get to get us over the finish line there. And then if they do come back and say we'll give you a million, we've got the set, you know, we've got the or one point one million, let's say, we'll get we'll have the, the amount we need. But if they come back and say we won't give you anything or two hundred thousand the town didn't approve 1.8. They only approved eight or seven or a million or whatever it is the town decides to approve. Can we apply for the grant in that case? Or do we need to put up all the money? Yeah, I think that's the question. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, because we're applying for 1.7, putting up one, but we're appropriating seven hundred in case we don't get one point seven. Yeah. we only get one. That's what I'm saying. And and we could word the, the the question on the ballot as, you know, up to, or something along those lines. So if we only end up needing one hundred and fifty thousand out of that money. Great, the town saves money and everyone's happy and we look really good next year. Um, but if we don't, it'd be. And I think what I'm kind of getting at is I think it would reflect in general. If we can't get any grant money, I'm not sure 1.8 million is something that the town can afford. That's just sort of the sort of the other end of that. So if we decide where our our line would be, if we can't get more than this much in, in outside funding, where is the point where we say we, we can't make this happen? If we can figure out what that line is in the meantime, that's the number we can then ask the town for. Well, if you're doing a debt exclusion, it's up to the town to decide that, right? Yeah. It, it's not even really up to us. I mean, we want to sell it, or yeah, I you know, potentially sell it. But it, if if we're asking for debt exclusion and at one point eight million dollars on your average three hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, you're looking at a hundred and ten dollars a year. Is that roughly for, for the fifteen year? year. Yeah. yeah, for the fifteen year, which I I personally think we can't go above fifteen years because. At some point, you're going to be needing a roof and a furnace and all these things. Well, in terms of the town, if you look at the the difference in the monthly or the difference in the the payments for these, the one ten versus ninety versus eighty, the town's paying so much more money for a thirty year mortgage, especially at the current interest rates. Right. Then, but, but you know, fifteen. But that's for the town residents to decide. Can they can they afford a hundred and ten dollars? Yeah. I guess what I'm because saying is rather than going to them and saying, hey, can you afford 110 I'd much rather go to them and say, hey, can you afford $50 for this 15-year thing if we took out an 800000 loan and got a million of, of grant funding? Because, again, if, if, if we get no grant funding at all, I, I don't think 110 is something that we're either, A, definitely going to have a hard time getting through the, the town, especially with the with the capital override we just did last year, but also I'm not sure it's fiscally responsible of the town to foot that entire bill on a property you know, for the senior center with the senior center paying what they're willing to pay. You know, it, if we pay all of it, you're saying it's 11,000 a year, sorry, 11,000 a month 
in mortgage. Right. If we're talking about them having more than half the building and they're going to pay us $4,000 a month and it's costing the town $15,000 a month for that property between mortgage and all the bills, we're, we're, getting, we're, we're paying $12,000 for half the building. You know? And so the question becomes, what's the point at which that $11,000 a month mortgage gets reasonable for us as a town to do? And we, we set the, our bottom line there. And if we can't get the, the, the grant funding to meet, meet that, make that work, you know, there's our authentic answer. And aside from grant funding, are there other, if we're moving, we could sell this building. That's a source of revenue. Um, are there other things that you want me to explore? Can, uh, we have a reserve fund. Can this space fit in that? Kind of just straight out the first question. Could we do that? Will that even fit? Yeah. You think, yeah. You think everything here would fit there, no problem? Well, I don't know about FCAT, but yeah. um, we could certainly fit our offices and storage. I mean, we the rooms are a lot bigger than we need here. Can you find out what the square footage of this building is for next week? Because um, that would give us a, a general idea of, you know, if this is a 4,000 square foot building or something yeah. like that, that yeah, gives yeah. us an idea of how much of that building we would need in order to have completely the same amount of space for everybody moving from here to there. Now, we can tweak that, obviously, if the rooms are different sizes and people need more or less space, we can tweak that, but yeah. it'd be good to know how many, so how many square feet are here. the question, do we want to move town hall? <laughs> yeah. That would, Correct. That's a big question. I mean, that, that's a big question. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to move the town hall? And then the other thing is, you could sell this building. What, what would really the market for this building be? Probably more senior housing. Location is great. It's right across from other senior housing. You know, it's this fairly large building with an elevator. So I could see that being a, a thing. I mean, we were having discussions about the need for market rate senior housing in town also. So if Correct. that's something we could make happen, you know. Correct. But, I mean, obviously, this isn't a move in ready building for senior housing. Yeah. Um, you're probably not going to get huge amounts of money for the amount of renovation they would have to do to actually turn this into housing, something like for that. Any, for any housing, yeah. You know, whether it's senior, low income, whatever, um, th th this would be a, bi a big a big job to turn this, you know, into something really much more than it's used for now as office spaces. And then we gotta look at what do we have for a need in town for office spaces? I know, Dan, you've talked before about looking for places where other groups could meet. Mm -hmm. um, that might be a good use for this building once it leaves, sure. you know, if, if the town offices decided to move. We could rent out rooms here for meetings, things like that. The town office would no longer be here. I'd be much more comfortable with letting people come in here, mm -hmm. giving them keys and access to the building. You know, for Boy Scouts or, you know, other groups that want to meet. Um, you know, is there a need for office? Is someone else looking for office space, you know, in this regional, you know, and I'm not saying superintendent's office, but something like that, mm -hmm. right? The superintendent's office, I think, rents space or uses space in Waitley, right? Uh, I think they used to. I, they used to. I think they just use it for storage now. But yeah. yeah, I think they're in the in frontier itself now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you know, I mean, there's other places yeah. like that too that might be looking for office space, and we could potentially be leasing some space out in this building. Mm -hmm. So. Now, in terms of outside funding, outside outside funding, I know that that is written towns in this region who like, wanted a new library and they do a big public fundraising campaign and like one of those, you know, temperature signs where they like incrementally raise it up, we raise 30% of the goal, that kind of thing. Is that something that would be either appropriate or doable to, you know, reach out to the South County Senior Center and be like, hey, you know, as part of getting this going, can we do a public outreach campaign and look for, and look for, you know, Warner Brothers to match donations or something like that. You know, find find ways of getting 
outside money sources to help offset the cost? Um, yes. I, I don't know about fundraising. I, my understanding has always been that you shouldn't. Uh, government should not fundraise. Um, and typically that's why libraries have friends of the library to mm -hmm. do that kind of work. Um, I know the senior center tried to put together a, a sunshine group to mm -hmm. do just that, and I don't think it happened, um, which to me says that the senior center can't fundraise either. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure for the 350th in Sunderland, they set up a 501c3 to take donations and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I could talk to the senior center about putting together a, a nonprofit to fundraise for, for building. Um, and even if that doesn't go towards a purchase price, but that helps with renovations or that helps with some other operating costs or something like that, you know? Yep. And I also have conversations with, you know, our state and federal elected officials and say, hey, <laughs> like, what, what can you tell us? What, what, what options are there out for us to apply to? Right, because I would think the senior center for fundraising, things like that, they may be more interested in putting their efforts towards outside activities mm -hmm. there, you know, yeah. equipment for horseshoes or, you know, badminton or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, because there's going to be a lot of those type of things. You're going to all of a sudden go, oh, look at this, you know, if this all happens. We've got room for a horseshoe pit, and we've got room for a badminton, and you know. But yeah, I think it's definitely worth reaching out to Natalie's office and Joe's office to see if they can support us in any way. Um, does the FURCOG have any resources in this respect that they could help us with? Is that something that they would have some input on or knowledge on? Or um, I could ask them, but. Okay. Yeah. I'm just throwing wide nets at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so yeah, if I know we've just given you a thousand things to have you check on, <laughs> but if you did work on that, that'd be lovely. Um, so I do have one other question pertaining to this, because can you have a question? So say we're going to hold a special town meeting to talk about this building. Can you have like a three option type question? Would you be willing to do debt exclusion up to one million dollars for this? Would you be, you know, debt exclusion up to one point seven, or you know, against? Can you give options like that? Um, not at the ballot, because okay. DOR writes the ballot questions. But we could probably make it multiple questions. Like, do you approve the bottom four hundred thousand? Do you prove a middle 400,000? Do you prove a top 400,000? And the town can decide how many of those to vote yes on. I would, I would imagine. I'm just, I'm just, just the picturing some, the <laughs> first and the third getting the votes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's two chunks. I'll take whatever chunks they want to get. I just mean that, you know, we, yeah. we, we can say like, you know, the first question is, do you prove 500,000 being assigned? The next question is, do you approve the town doing 250,000 above the 500,000 in the previous question? And then the third question asking for another I'm just, I'm just wondering if that gets us to some place where we have a better understanding of what the residents of town are really willing to you know, put forward towards this without it being an all or nothing, right? If, if, if we knew the town was willing to put up up to a million dollars and if we can get the rest with grants, the town is great with this, is different than yes at 1.7 million or no at nothing. Well, yes, at 1.7, and hope maybe we'll get something. <laughs> it's, it's harder, yeah. Right. <laughs> but if you kind of know what that spot is, so we need you might not get a no. So we need two special elections. The first one is just a, a non binding question. Would you, you know, would you approve this much? <laughs> would you approve that much? Would you approve that much? And then we can, you know. I mean, it'd be great if you'd have some way of polling the town 
right? Being able to get a, a, a feel for that. Yeah, so, I just know. would... You know what I mean? Because they're, they're very different situations. Because if we can get some funding and some grant money, th there may be more buy-in than... Can we fund the whole thing? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah, yeah and... <coughs> talking out loud with you, you know, what happens... Do we... <laughs> What happens if we have a CPA question and over, you know, a debt exclusion question and the CPA does it, you know? Had, right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just... I'm also going to reach out to see if there are some people who have gone through similar processes and, and can help us think through it a little bit because mm -hmm. it kind of seems to me like or at least my previous experience, it, buying property does not happen quickly. Correct. <laughs> and I think we're, we're trying, which is, uh, hey, the property is available, we should take our right. shot at it. Correct. Um, but I think typically, you know, you would plan out the financing, what the use is, what the space is, and then say, okay, here, town meeting, this is why we think it's great, and here's all the money we're bringing to the table that you don't have to pay for. And, this is I think we're just trying to, yeah. Trying to get, we're, we're Building the plane is we're getting rushed falling, a right? Yeah. Um, so is there a way to have the, the special town meeting before the deadline be a, for lack of a better word, a, you know, a commitment, but not a, a have something provisionally passed in February, let's say, find out the results of the, the grant and then have the, the a more official something other happening, or a second round of approval happening in the regular town meeting? Or am I just making it more complicated for no reason? Hmm. That's an interesting take. I like it because you know whether or not you get the grant. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, is, it, is it a risk that we take that long to do it? Or, or are we just as good going to special meeting and saying this is all contingent on the grant? If it doesn't, the grant doesn't happen, then you guys aren't out this money either. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so so special town meeting and I'm just throwing numbers out there, half a million dollars. Then we can apply for the grant and say we have half a million dollars. And then if they come back and say, Okay, we're only giving you a million, we can go back at annual town meeting and get the other two yeah. three hundred thousand. Is that what you're That's thinking? what I'm saying. Like like just ask for enough to get the grant out off the off the ground in a special town meeting with the understanding of the town that we're we're not saying that this is like we're going ahead with the project. You're not committing a product. You're just saying that contingent on the grant happening, the town would be comfortable with this amount of money, you know, in that in that respect. And then, yeah, we apply for the grant. We, the grant comes back. Hey, 1.7, awesome. We can go back to the town and say, good news. We only need to ask you for 250 so we can buy the property and fix it up or something like that. Um, or they come back and say, we'll give you 700,000. And then we're going back to the town and saying, okay, it's going to cost us 1.1 million. And then we can make a decision at the normal town meeting as a town about whether to move forward, knowing what our funding is at that point. How long do they take to decide? They might, they might take to hold. Do they take? Is it that short? We apply in March. Well, we know by April. Probably not. Yeah, it's the, other so thing. the, the deadlines might not, yeah. might not overlap. Yeah, um, and also, yeah, no, I, yeah. Can you oh. can you ask the grant because you were going to reach out to them anyways to get yeah. an idea? Can you ask them like in the past what has your turnaround been on that? You know, can we have a general idea? Because if they say, oh yeah, usually we know by two weeks, cool, or July, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two, so, weeks, two weeks I cannot. I believe. guess <laughs> I guess I'll say CDBG is a federal program, so that goes through the state. So my guess is that you know, two months would be the minimum. So. May sometime, maybe June. Right. Okay. Um, unless, wait, but I think, sorry, I think the, the federal government just gives the state a bunch of funds and then the state looks at the applications, I think is how it works. So it, it's not like there are two levels of review. Right. Ooh, Chris has a question. Chris? 
Uh, so I just went back to our email. Uh, we got a press release about CDBG grants in August. Okay. <laughs> so Thanks, it's August. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was. I knew it wasn't short time. <laughs> no, not for um, which I guess also is a question that we may want to ask. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we may want to ask of the property owner: is you know what's your what's your time frame here? Yep. You know, really are you happen. willing to work with us until middle of the summer if this is what it's going to take? Um. Sorry. There's um. The, the clerk mentioned that there's a primary scheduled for March 5th. Um, and we'd need a 35 days notice for, for a special election. Mm. Okay. So. 30 um, days? 35. 35 days. So that's. Uh, no, beginning, beginning of February, February. the earliest we could be if we were to do it soon. Right. How much? How much notice do you need to cancel a uh, special town meeting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because um, it sounds like we would need to decide in the next week or two if we're going to go ahead with that, so we can get the notice put out, so we'd have enough time to make all of this work. Or at the, at the very least, by the end of the year, we would need to know, because the end of the year then gives us what February sixth, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Not that we have to hold it that day, just that we will want to get the notice out as soon as possible to. All right. I think we've asked enough of you for the next week. <laughs> if we come up with anything else we want you to do, to we know how to get a hold of you. <laughs> um, and we can talk next week, and, and you know, if you have more questions at that point, we can move forward. Okay. Um, anyone else have any other discussion about this this week or? No, um, that's enough. <laughs> I, I think I'm starting to get a little bit uh, fried in the brain region for this. All right, um, so that's it for the 23 plum tree discussion for, for today. We will uh, continue that next week. Uh, next up, we have select board updates. Um, I don't have anything this week. Crystal, do you have anything? Um, yeah, last week we did interviews with the um, final two candidates for South County EMS Chief's job. Um, they made a decision and they're currently in negotiations with their um, first choice offer. So hopefully we'll hear something on that soon. Wonderful. That's exciting. Yeah. Glad to have that position filled. Uh, anything else? No, I'm okay. good. Yeah. No, we covered. I went to the meeting for the Board of Oversight for the, and uh, we talked that, that enough about that. <laughs> yep. Okay. Fair enough. All right, uh, Jeff. Uh, time measure updates? Yes, a uh, couple things. Um, the first is that unfortunately we're not going to be doing the uh, lights over Sunderland this year. Uh, we've just had declining participation. It was, it was a big thing when COVID happened. <laughs> Everybody could drive around and see lights, but um, people have uh, just not been as into it. So um, we're not going to do it this year. Just wanted to let people know. Um, the second thing is we got a couple of um, ARPA requests that came in, and I was hoping that we could get them possibly approved tonight. Um, they're, the requests are $5,000 um, to replace and repair street lights. That We don't have an exact uh, budget figure yet, but um, partially because we don't know what the labor is going to be, but we've talked to Eversource, um, we've talked to Pine Ridge Technologies, who's going to be doing the work, um, and we think that 5,000 should be enough to get all, all the lights that are out lit, um, and I think moving the light by the Cemetery Road crosswalk closer to the crosswalk pole. Okay. There are two poles there. There's one at the crosswalk and then one across Cemetery Road. Mm. And the light's on the one further away. So. Okay, which makes um, sense. So that, that's one. And then the other is um, we applied for a risk management grant from Maya. We apply every year. Uh, we get up to $10,000. This year we applied for a CO2 detector in the boiler room at the public safety complex and a trench box for the highway department for when they're digging. Um, Maya came back and said, hey, we'll pay for half the trench box, but we can't pay for the whole thing. So um, 
they wanted to know if we could cover the rest of the cost of the trench box, which would be four thousand one hundred dollars. So we're looking at five thousand and a four thousand one hundred. Yeah, nine thousand one hundred total, and that would leave um, one hundred fifty-four thousand seven hundred seventy-one dollars and eighty-two cents of unspent ARPA funds so far. Just do we have to, uh, do we have a budget item for lights, or is just like why is this coming up as a? We don't have any. We don't. We never said. But I mean, the lights go on. Lights go out. We should have one, right? I, mean, um, I believe that four years ago, all the lights were replaced with LEDs. Okay. So there was an assumption that they would that last for 10 years <laughs> and we wouldn't need anything. <laughs> so maybe we need to think, rethink and that. And how many are out right now? Um, I believe there's at least three. Yeah, three I remember would be okay. the number from last time. You can get about so three. three out and we want to move one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any other discussion? The trench box, I think, is good. Just they should have a trench box. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would at this time entertain a motion to approve five thousand dollars for lights and forty one hundred dollars for trench box. So move. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Three nothing, Jeff. Thank you. And then the last thing is I've been working on our budget presentation schedule. Um, it's not. Final, but I wanted to tell you what we have so far. Um, we have the library coming in on January 8th, uh, fire on the 16th, the senior center and EMS on the 22nd, assessors, town clerk, uh, treasurer collector, and building or inspectors on the 29th, um, highway and select board on the 5th. Uh, um, Franklin Tech on the 12th, and then... That's February, right? Yeah, sorry, February 12th. And then I don't have anything the 19th because that's school vacation week, and then I'm not here the 26th. Um, but So we could schedule something for the 19th, but I left it open in case you didn't want to. Um, and then I, we were asked to join the Sunderland Elementary School budget hearing on uh, school committee budget hearing on March 4th and the frontier school committee budget hearing on March 12th okay. so I, I'll send that out um, we're just waiting on a couple more but I wanted to let you know and it, who who in terms of budget presentations is not already covered in that schedule um, we just need confirmation from um, the I think the Board of Health and police chief Okay. And that's it. And I, yeah. And we so we're not going to be seeing a whole in. bunch more than the. the, the no, 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 no. That's okay. pretty much it. Yeah. So, yeah, if you don't mind just sending that to us, that'd be great to have a physical copy of that. Yep. That's all I have. All right. Um, that should be everything. Any final business before we call today? All right. At this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion that we adjourn. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. It is seven forty-three. Please take us out. Thank you.